And that is the close of our formal presentation. Dr. Benning, do you have anything to add before we open it up for our guests to ask questions? Thanks, Ayana. I think the only thing I'll add is uh, for those that were look at the material, we recommend that students have an engineering degree. One of the slides said civil engineering degree. It needs to say an engineering degree. Uh, ignore the fact that that slide had civil on it. But other than that, I think that covered the full content of the program and uh, the executive summary on how people apply and come on in. I look forward to addressing any questions that folks have. Great. Thank you so much for that correction. We'll be sure. We will archive um, a production, and so you will have access, everyone in the audience will have access to this information. Um, it'll be a little cleaner, uh, six-minute voiceover production on the website in a couple of weeks. So I don't see any questions in the Q&A. This is your opportunity. If you have questions, specific program questions or admissions questions, any questions you have, this is the time to submit them in the Q&A. We did receive some questions in advance via email, so I will go to those questions and look forward to receiving questions from the audience shortly. And the first question is, are all courses offered at all times? Can I start the program in the summer? Uh, the short answer is yes, you can start the program in the summer, but not all courses are offered during all three semesters. And uh, it's pretty obvious which courses are available. You'll be able to get through the program very easily starting in the summer. Uh, our principal course that you need to take, the intro course is offered all three semesters. We don't offer a couple of the core courses yet in the summer. Uh, the two sequence program, Fundamentals of Engineering Space Systems 1 and 2, are only offered in the fall and the spring. And they're both offered in the fall and they're both offered in the spring. Uh, but we haven't made a summer offering of that yet. But uh, you'll have no problem starting in the summer and uh, whichever semester suits you. All right, thank you for that. Um, and so I think Michael wants to know the timetable that he'd be working up against toward getting the degree. He's aware of the five core courses and the five electives. Um, so I guess talk a little bit more about the five year maximum and things like that. So that's right. So. We, uh, this is an engineering for professionals program. We expect folks to be doing this part-time and have a full-time job. So we, the engineering for professionals program lets students do this entire activity in a five-year time frame. So you kind of have that latitude. And uh, 10 courses in five years is pretty obvious. Do one in the fall, do one in the spring, do that for five years, uh, you get your degree. There are those that can do it quicker. I often get asked, can I do it full-time and get it done quickly? I think the quickest we've ever seen anybody do it is uh, five semesters. So a little over a year and a half, two years is very quick. It's a lot of work. Uh, these courses are pretty stressful. So my recommendation is uh, figure out you know, the timeline you want and you can adjust and take the courses that suit the timeline that you want to accomplish the degree in. But uh, I wouldn't recommend doing it in less than uh, five semesters. All right, great, thanks for that. And I think Michael's follow-up um, he's wondering about the hours per week that it will take per course to uh, complete the courses. How much, should, how much time should he dedicate as a full-time um, employee? Master's degree programs at the Whiting School, we generally uh, expect the instructor and student course load to be 10 hours per week which would include the lecture time. So if you took a virtual live course and you had uh, two and a half hours of lecture time during that, we would expect there to be uh, seven and a half hours of out of classroom interaction, whether it's reading, independent research, working with your team or uh, doing your homework. So it's 10 hours of work per week per course. That's about the average that I would expect. All right, great, thank you for that. The next question, if the undergraduate de degree is in theoretical and applied linguistics, which include multiple courses in mathematics and computer science, will I still be admitted in addition, in addition to having an MS in computer science? You would likely be admitted provisionally required to take a year of college physics. This is a program set up to do not only the mathematics side, but the physics side of spacecraft engineering. So with that background, I don't hear you having physics in the background. You would need to take uh, a year of college physics. Community college would work out fine. 
Hopkins University, or any other accredited uh, activity. But that would be the one uh, deficiency in your application. But for folks with those deficiencies, they'll get a provisional admission, which means go do those prerequisites, and then you'll get a full admit once you accomplish that work with a grade uh, of B minus or higher. Great, thanks for that. Um, Michael, we answered that question. I hope if we didn't, you can circle back shortly. Kristen's question, how many students are currently enrolled? What is the typical outcome for graduates? Where do they become employed? Does this program have a track record of helping students to switch careers into the civil space industry? That's about four questions yeah. in yeah. one there. I'll, right. uh, I'm looking at them now, I'll address okay. them. We okay. have over 600 students in the program today. This is a, a program that's very much in high demand. And if you look at the courses that we offer, and if you look at the electives that we offer, you can see why uh, it is a program that is in that level of high demand. Uh, as far as the outcomes um, that we don't track outcomes of the individual students, we're also a pretty nascent program. Uh, the program's been around for only six or seven years. So we have of the 600 we have in the program, we've graduated less than 100 students to date, but we've been on a steep incline of adding well over 150 students per year to come to the program. So we don't have a audited track of the student outcomes uh, and where they've been employed. And we don't, uh, we don't do that officially. And then the final one is about uh, helping students switch careers into the civil space industry. It depends on what you're switching from. Uh, this is a course set up for engineers that are going to build spacecraft and design spacecraft. So switching careers, if you don't have a degree and are already working in the field is a challenging one. We don't recommend folks come into this rigorous engineering program if they're looking to switch careers, if they're not already in an engineering discipline. History majors, uh, business majors have a difficult time in this. And we actually recommend folks that are thinking of management aspects to really think about the engineering for professionals, engineering management program. That's more about aspects of people in that domain and folks that are less interested in the hands-on technical work of designing, building, delivering and operating spacecraft. I think I addressed that sequence of questions. Yeah, great. Thank you for that. The next question from Tim, is this a systems engineering course or is it more of a general engineering course focused on communication technology? Uh, so if you're talking about the program, the space systems engineering program, the master's degree, it's not focused on systems engineering. That is one aspect. We have one course of the 10 you would take. Uh, and it's not focused on a, a communications technology either. So if you look at our electives, we cover all aspects of spacecraft design and development from ground systems to propulsion systems, communication systems is an aspect of it, but designing uh, electro-optical uh, systems, designing uh, the power modules and avionics. So all aspects of the spacecraft and space systems engineering process. So it is not a systems engineering program and it is not focused on only communication technology. Great, thank you for that clarification. The next question from Bamshi. I'm an entrepreneur in cybersecurity and was always interested in space engineering and exploration. Will this program help jumpstart my space career and help me build quality networks in this space? Uh, in terms of the network, you'll definitely expand your network significantly. As I mentioned, the program has over 600 active students. And as you come into the program, you're gonna be paired up in many of your courses uh, in terms of, of programs and projects so you will get a chance to interact and, and build your own professional network uh, in here as well. Uh, will it help you jumpstart your space career? Again, cybersecurity, going into space system engineering, still need to have an engineering aspect of that. And, and you know, from a jumpstart perspective, there's a lot of internal personal motivation and not knowing you as an individual. Are you a, a gregarious, outgoing, motivated person to go meet people and, and, and put yourself out there? It's hard to say, but you'll definitely get the technical skills to go to the next step in the engineering discipline of delivering space systems. All right, great, thank you for that. Um, the next question from Bissy: how long per semester? I'm thinking you're asking how long do semesters last? So our fall semester begins 
on September, no, sorry, August 30th, and the last day of classes is December 14th. So I think that typically it's four and a half months, and then the next semester will begin in January and in May. So four and a half months, uh, our, sem our semesters typically last. Of course, the summer semester is shorter. Hopefully. Yeah, so the, the fall and spring are 14 weeks long. There you go. Uh, they're, they're 15 weeks long because they each have a one week break in them. And the summer is shorter, it's 10 weeks long. So you basically do um, same amount of coursework in a compressed amount of time frame. There you go. Thank you for that. Um, Rakesh is asking about scholarship or assistantship, assistantship in this program. Um, so I'm glad you, you brought this up. A lot of people ask about admissions and aid and costs. Um, so right now the cost per course is $4,755. So we tell students to budget between $47,000 um, and $50,000 to include books. There are no additional fees. The only additional fee you will pay is your graduation fee. 78% um, of our students uh, are, do have employer benefits. So you wanna check to be sure that your employer does not offer a tuition remission or a tuition reimbursement program. We unfortunately do not offer internal funding for the part-time master's programs, um, but I can send you the GEM fellowships and there's some other outside fellowships that I can't recommend, but I can send you a link with information um, for underrepresented minorities in the STEM space. So I can surely connect you with that. And I'll also put a link to our admissions and aid page in the chat for you all to reference later. I hope that answered your question. Um, that same question again. Another question, if I want to specialize in communications and electrical machines, systems and spacecraft, would this be a degree I would wanna go for and what track would I take? Uh, yes, it would be. And you would definitely wanna take the technical track and you could also, if that was a very detailed area you wanted to look at, work with your academic advisor to look at courses that may be offered in the electrical and computer engineering program that we allow our students to take as electives. So you'd obviously take our five core courses, but you could work with your academic advisor to create the program that you want. And if you wanted to expand more into electrical and computer, uh, computer engineering, or even communications, you could look at those EP programs and work with your academic advisor to use those as electives to transfer into our program once you get admitted. Great, thank you for that. The next question from Ethan, could you elaborate more on what is unique to the leadership or management sub-focus compared to the engineering management master's program? Now, that is an interesting question. Um, if you look at our offerings, all of the leadership and management offerings that we allow as electives are offerings in the engineering management or systems engineering program. So what we would be doing is focusing on the five core courses in the space systems engineering program, and then look at electives in the engineering management or systems engineering uh, program you would get a degree, your degree would note a space systems engineering master's degree instead of the engineering management or systems engineering master's degree. Depends on what you wanna highlight in your career, depends on what you wanna focus on, but you would need to still take our five core courses, but there are no new, new unique aspects of those courseworks. We draw those electives in from those two programs. All right, wonderful. The next question, can working at APL be used to fund this part-time program? And if so, th is this a common path? Yes, this is a common path. We have many APL employees um, actually who work as uh, chairs and, and faculty in our program. And then also a lot of employees who take the courses and graduate with master's degrees. Do you have anything you wanna add to that? Nope, oh, you hit everything perfectly. All right. I don't see any more questions in the Q&A right now or the chat, but what typically happens when I act like I'm about to close the session is that more questions come in. So I'm just going to talk slowly right now. If you have any additional questions, please forward them in the Q&A right now. Patrick, do you want to talk a little bit more about the capstone project maybe? Sure, I'll, I'll uh, give a brief summary of that. So we do have a residency weekend in our program, typically your last uh, course. Uh, you're teamed up in this pro in, in that 
in that course with other students that you have in there and you're building up uh, a test plan that you then implement in the lab here in Laurel, Maryland. So we've got individual small sat test bed kits that you and your one or two lab partners get as your kit. And you basically go through a, a disassembly, reassembly, and work through your integration and test plan, your data collection plan to understand, learn, communicate, command, to get telemetry from, and work through this bench top spacecraft that you will be interacting with over the weekend. So the course builds up. The first 10 weeks are working on the INT plan, working with your lab partner, figure out what you want to accomplish when you come in, get agreement from the instructor on that matter. Show up here a Friday afternoon. You'll get a working tour of the space activities going on at the Applied Physics Lab. And then on Saturday morning, you get up and begin uh, working your uh, benchtop spacecraft activities uh, on the lab here. And it takes all day. It's a basically an 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. type of activity on campus here in Laurel, Maryland. So outstanding hands-on activity. Students love it. And uh, we look forward to having you apply and, uh, and come in. And it's a, a live in-person interaction. So uh, you're starting to meet a lot of folks and uh, get to know your uh, peers in the program much better during that weekend. Great, that certainly sounds exciting. And I'm not even a space systems engineer. So yeah, um, really interesting stuff. I see a question in the chat. Um, wondering if it's possible to speak with you, Patrick, to discuss a specific career transition. Um, so Kristen, I'm, I'm, I'll let Patrick answer that, but we also have admissions coordinators and, and you would also be assigned an advisor when you begin your application. I, I understand if you wanna to speak to someone before that time. And so I can connect you with an admissions coordinator. I'm not sure how Patrick's schedule looks or if he's willing. So my preference, let's start there, Ayana. Let's get them connected to the admissions coordinator. Okay. And uh, if the questions get beyond their level of ability to answer, I get brought in uh, quite frequently. So that's a good first step. Make sure that they are able to get that uh, address a lot more quickly. And then I can be brought in as uh, things get needed to do. Right. So Kristen, I just sent you my um, my email address. So shoot me an email and I will give you, I'll connect you to our admission staff and they'll be sure to to talk you through your specific career transition. Um, and then another question of, is about research opportunities available. Oh, you know what, before you go to that, so I see other people are interested in speaking with our uh, admission staff. So what I'm going to do is give you their email address directly. So I will take myself out as the middleman. It's jhep at jhu.edu. You can email them there. They will connect you with someone who is specifically assigned to space systems engineering um, to help walk you through the processes or, or talk through any issues that you may have. If you do not, excuse me, if you do not get um, a response in a timely manner, then you can shoot me an email and my email address I will put again in the chat. Um, so this is question is about research opportunities and I don't believe you all offer research opportunities, Patrick, but if you want to. That's correct. It's a part time program Our faculty are part time. We right. don't have a research program in the master's degree uh, at the uh, at the engineering for professionals. So no, we don't offer that. I'm sorry to say that. All right. Okay, I do not see any other questions right now. Um, so we'll, we will wrap this session up. Again, if you have any questions after we are finished with the session, you can email jhep at jhu.edu. They will answer any questions you have. If they don't know the answer, they'll send it on up the ladder or send it over to me. Um, and Patrick, do you have anything that you'd like to say before we close the session out this evening? I'll say uh, thank you, Ayana. I don't know if it's my Wi-Fi. For that came in and for your question. And we look forward to having you uh, apply and become part of our program. We certainly do. I think we're having Wi-Fi issues, so this is timely. Um, it may be me, it may be on my end. Yes, we look forward to seeing you all in our virtual classrooms and capstone project for space systems engineering. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks again, Patrick. Thank you. Take care. Bye.